I would like to call the uh, May 8th school board meeting to order. Wichita Public Schools will be the district of choice in our region where all students and staff are empowered to dream, believe, and achieve. Would you please join me in a moment of silence? Thank you. Our colors are presented tonight by the Curtis Middle School JRTC cadets. It's Command Sergeant Major Liliana Rowe, First Sergeant Angela Palacio, Corporal Phoebe LeMay, and Sergeant Shauna Leal. Sergeant Leal uh, was just selected by the Leadership Honor Honorary Cadet Board as the honorary cadet for our middle schools. So congratulations to you on that. <laughs> Would you please rise for the presentation of the colors? the colors. Order. Arms. Post. Collars. Please join me on the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you very much to the Curtis leadership team for the colors. Um, first item of business, Patrick. First item of business, public hearing on republication of the general fund and the at-risk funds in the 2022-23 budget. Okay. We do have an open mic for anybody who would like to speak on the pub public hearing for the uh, change in the budget. I'm seeing no one. Diane, do you have a motion? I move to close the public hearing on the republication of the general fund and the at-risk funds in the 2022-2023 budget. Second. So, the motion was made by Diane and seconded by Stan. Please cast your vote. Well, we have to wait a second. Now you may vote. Uh, Hazel's not here. I know. No. Um, motion passes 6-0. The hearing is closed. Next item. Next item, adoption of the amended 2022-23 budget for general fund and at-risk fund and budget report. Diane? I move to adopt the amended 2022-2023 budget for the general fund and at-risk funds and the related budget report. I second. Moved by Diane and seconded by Kathy. Please cast your vote. Motion passes 6-0. Next item. Next item, under reports, Superintendent's Student Advisory Council. Thank you all very much for coming. It's always a pleasure to get to see you and hear what you're doing. Um, 
Good evening, everyone. My name is Alexis Youngman, and I'm a senior at Northeast Magnet High School. Hi, my name is Celine Tran, and I'm a sophomore at Northeast High School. My name is Jabron Bennett, and I'm a senior at Wichita Alternative. And my name is Mackenzie, and I'm a senior at Wichita Heights High School. Um, before we do get started, I do want to say thank you to all of our Wichita Public School teachers, since it is um, Teacher Appreciation Week. And then um, on April 18th, 120 students met downtown for the Super Super SAC meeting, and we discussed ways to support student success and the new graduation requirements for the class of 2028. Um, I'm going to be starting us off with our icebreaker questions. The first one was, what or who motivates you to stay on track to graduate? We found that many students looked to their family and their peers for motivation, and many students also had self-motivation, and they were very committed to their future. Um, the next question was, how are students who are meeting academic standards recognized or celebrated? And we found that many students are recognized by the honor roll, um, and that many students would like to be recognized with optional public recognition, social media, assemblies, an example of assembly, they were talking about maybe student of the quarter, student of the month, kind of in front of the whole school. But a majority of the students wanted more public recognition. OK, and for our next, our, our next icebreaker question is, what are the reasons and causes a student can get off track? So one of them is mental and physical um, health. Um, a lot of students were especially affected by the COVID-19 pandemic that happened in 2020. And um, not having enough support system from friends, family, and teachers of some, of some sort. And certain groups of people that um, students tend to hang out with, so more of like a bad influence. And some students are overwhelmed because of work, school, and et cetera. And lastly, some students are affected personally from their personal life and their personal home. Our next question, question five, was what, are, what opportunities are there for students to get back on track if they're falling behind? Um, the first one was after school tutoring that some students benefit from. Another was um, Saturday school, which is offered at Northeast, but we thought that it could be beneficial to other schools in the district. Um, extended learning opportunities, communication between the teachers and the students. Um, teachers accepting late work and not just giving it a zero. And other things like Edunity, which is an online resource for students to use to like credit recovery. And then kind of the main question that we were there to answer was in regards to the fact that the Kansas State Department is changing graduation requirements for the class of 2028. So we were given a list of post-secondary assets, which the class of 2028 and beyond would have to pick two of those assets to be able to graduate. So we were asked what assets we would recommend be added, taken away, or taken away, um, or kept on the list. And so the kind of the overall consensus that we all had was that we think the more things that are on the list, the better, because one thing might work for one person but not work for someone else and vice versa. So the more things that are on the list, the easier it'll be for more people to succeed. That being said, there were some that stuck out to us that we liked and then some that we didn't like so much. So the ones that we did like were a GPA. So like 3.5 or above we thought was a good way to measure college readiness or would be a good asset. Um, also extracurricular, so like you have to be in a club for a couple of years or have a certain amount of hours committed to a club or an extracurricular sports or something like that. Um, also we thought life skills classes would be a good one, industry level certification, um, culinary careers, but add like a marketing or business element to it. Like I know some schools are doing coffee shops, so we really liked that and thought that would be a good one. Um, also foreign language, because a lot of colleges do already require a foreign you, that you take a foreign language, maybe three to four years of foreign language could get you a requirement, or if you get the seal of biliteracy. Um, also community service hours we thought would be great, internships, especially for those people who want to go into the workforce rather than college. Um, and then the, there were a few that we didn't love so much. One of them was teacher assistant, because I know a lot of kids at my school who are teacher assistant kind of just sit in the back of their class on their phones the whole time, so we didn't think that would be a great one. And then we didn't love the 90% attendance, and then 
We also didn't love the ACT just because someone might not really do a whole lot in school and then score well on the ACT. So we thought that GPA was a better way to kind of balance how you're going to do in college. So yeah, those were our feedback on that question. And I think that's all that we have for this. So do you guys have any questions for us? I see no questions, but I really appreciate the report that you gave to us so that we can read it. Yeah. And what yeoman's work you've done. Thank you so oh, very, yes, of very course. much. You're we welcome. really appreciate hearing from you all. Yeah, I, we all appreciate the opportunity to be here. So, And then there was one more thing. I, As all of you probably know, this is Dr. Alicia Thompson's last board meeting. So on behalf of SuperSAC, I just wanted to say thank you so much for all you do. I've been so grateful to be a part of SuperSAC, and I'll hold all the experience that I, ha I had with it close to my heart. And that's largely because of how kind and welcoming, just how great of a superintendent you were. So I know that you'll be greatly missed, and I know you have a fabulous retirement. Thank you, guys. Thank you for doing that. That that probably means as much to Dr. Thompson as any reception she's had. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Next item. Next item under reports. Good news. I'm not sure how to um, how to top these amazing young people. <laughs> Uh, it is indeed a joy to have a chance to work with them, and I think you're going to get to see several of them in just a few minutes <laughs> as we celebrate our first good news item of the evening. This is always a super cool opportunity to meet the young people that represent uh, the best of the best in their classes that are our top scholarship winners. And I'm eager to hear the total figure because I have not heard that figure yet. And it is usually one that is quite impressive. So as we get started, I am pleased to welcome Miss Amanda Kingry, our Assistant Superintendent for Secondary Schools to the podium. All right. Um, good evening, President Logan. Um, Vice President Albert, uh, Dr. Thompson, and the board members. It is uh, really hard to come up here and speak after those kids. They did an amazing job. I just sat there. I was like, wow. Uh, they're so articulate. Um, great job for them. So today we're going to celebrate some of our seniors, just like um, Wendy said. These students are all our top scholarship recipients at all of our high schools. And so um, we're going to recognize the top 10 as well as anybody that um, received $40,000 or more. But I would love for these, are they going to come in or are we just, I, I don't know, are we going to be able to see them? Because <laughs> I would love to see them. <laughs> All right. Um, so we're just going to start with each and every school. But before we do that, um, I really want to recognize everyone who helped support these students to get where they are today. Um, we have all the way, it's not just a high school effort. And we have to make sure that we understand that it starts all the way from pre-K all the way up. So all of our elementary um, teachers and administrators and staff um, to our middle school and our high, our high, our high school, sorry, um, have prepared them for today, but also um, our families. And so families, thank you for being here today because we know just like you heard in the report from the students, it takes a village. It's not just one or two people. It goes from the family um, to the school and the community that support these students. And then also, most importantly, the students are the ones that have to put in the work day in and day out to get to where they are today. So these students are obviously prepared for the next level because they were able to um, show that by receiving these um, scholarships. And that's really ultimately our goal for um, Wichita Public Schools is for us to prepare students for the next level and for that to be either college or career readiness and life readiness. And so these students have absolutely exhibited that. Um, lastly, I really want to recognize our college and career um, 
center our, our counselors as well because without them they are the ones that are sharing all of the scholarships with our students they are giving them and exposing them to those opportunities and letting them know what's out there they are also the ones who had to collect all of this data and it is a chore for them to come and try to collect everything from all of these seniors so the numbers that i have today they are the numbers that we were able to collect. We know that there's probably still some more out there. So again, be cognizant of that. You're gonna hear some really large numbers and we know that there's probably much more out there, but this is what we were able to gather. So we are going to celebrate all of them, but before I bring all of our students in, I want to share um, some numbers specifically for you. So 2,719, that is the number of anticipated seniors that we anticipate to graduate um, from the class of 2023 for this school year. So 2,719 students, that's a lot, a lot of students that we're preparing um, for a career and for college. The next number I wanna talk about are the number of students that we know for a fact are receiving scholarship offers, and that is 826 students that have already been offered scholarships um, through our colleges. And then, last but not least, the most important number, the number that you guys are waiting to hear, like Wendy said, um, the total that we have been able to collect from students to know that's going to be um, offered we are at 55,609,595 dollars. So we are, that's a large amount. So at this time, I'm actually gonna let the building administrators, I'm gonna let them come out and they are going to share with you the names of the students and um, where they might be attending. Thank you, uh, members of the board, Dr. Thompson, Leroy Parks, principal at Chester Lewis. Uh, as principal at Chester Lewis, I'm also responsible for the students at Town East Learning Center. Um, that's in partnership with Simon Youth Foundation. Um, our students we have here tonight are Brenton Horsley, who will be attending WSU Tech. Casey Pham is going to Fringe University. Ashley Tejeda is attending Wichita State University. Jabron Bennett is going to Kansas State University, against my will, uh, and Jordan Chad is going to WSU. And I'd also like to acknowledge uh, Ms. Uh, Denea Kramer, our counselor at, Town e or at Chester Lewis Programs. She works with the students at Town East and the adults, and also our college and career coordinator, Ms. Amy Alvarez, so thank you. All right, next we have um, East High School. And so we have Principal Sarah Richardson, who is going to share her information. All right, thank you board members and Dr. Thompson and Ms. Kingery. Uh, my name is Sarah Richardson, Principal of Wichita High School East. Mr. Parks is like, like, a, like the biggest fan. Uh, yeah. Um, Late. Yeah, just stay close to me, my friends. Stay close to me. Uh, so we are graduating the 145th graduating class of the original Wichita High School, Wichita High School East this year, and that's pretty exciting. Class of 2023, and these are uh, six of our top 10 scholars. As a total, the 145th graduating class has a total of $21,742 and some change. Uh, reading math is not my strong suit, so we're very proud of this class. $21 million. So uh, I'll just go through uh, our top scholar winner is Ms. Kara Kinsley, and she's going to uh, St. Louis University next year. <laughs> our uh, second is MD Zuhair, who is going to the University of Southern California. <laughs> Ms. Kenia Johnson's number three, going to McPherson College. Uh, Max Christie going to Morehouse College. Uh, 
Elizabeth McWabby going to the University of Kansas. And Augustine Al going to the University of Tulsa. So we're very proud of them. And I do want to introduce our college and career coordinator who works with all of our seniors, just not these six, uh, Cami Kennedy. And we're very just proud of everybody that has worked so hard to get these kids where they're going. And don't forget where you come from. Yeah. We'll miss you. <laughs> Okay, next up we have Heights High School and we have Eric Filippi, the principal who's gonna share the names. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening. My name is Eric Filippi. I'm the principal at Wichita Heights High School. I'd like to go ahead and start our introductions uh, with Miss Lauren Welch. Are we still holding applauses till the very end because I think I was, I was awkward on my part. <laughs> uh, Cliff uh, Hosea. Jihana Sokar. Miranda Arambula. Mr. Austin Vaughn. Miss Mackenzie Bino, who I believe you guys just heard from. Miss Emily McCollum. And Mr. Carlos Silva. And I would also like to introduce our new college and career coordinator, Ms. Shanna Lacey. All right, next up we have North High School and we have Stephanie Wasco here to share her students. I'm very proud to introduce the following North High scholarship recipients. Our first recipient is Kylie LaValle, and Kylie is attending Wichita State University. <laughs> Maylee Hansen. <laughs> Maylee is attending Wichita State University. Gracia Nunez Palomares. <laughs> Gracia will be attending Newman University. Zane Bumpus. Zane will be attending Kansas State University. Aries Hudgens. <laughs> Aries will be attending the University of Vermont. <laughs> Adia File. <laughs> Adia will be attending Sweetbriar. Eden Shockley. <laughs> Eden will be attending the University of Kansas. Diana Colchada Arista. <laughs> Diana will be attending Wichita State University. <laughs> Katie Blessman. <laughs> Katie will be attending Butler Community College. And our last recipient isn't here with us tonight, but would like to recognize her as well, Taryn St. Clair, and she'll be attending Tabor College. Next up, we should be having Northeast, yes, Northeast Magnet. And so we have Ben Myrick here, principal of Northeast, to share his students. Good evening. Uh, we have four of our uh, 10 scholars here. I'm gonna read those 10 names and we'll recognize uh, particularly the four that are here. So who you see in front of you from your right to left, Kalisha Lawrence Henry. Uh, <laughs> followed by Angelique Gray. <laughs> Rachel Hickman. <laughs> and Jalen Armstrong. <laughs> Others in our top 10 were Morgan Sensel, Ethan Sorensen, Jaden Chung, Reham Rahman, Carice Prophet, and Trinity Snyder. He's a little bit taller than me. So uh, you're probably gonna have to move this too. All right, um, so next up we have Northwest High School and we have Eric Kofer Holdeman, the principal there at Northwest. Good evening, we too have s several missing but six of our 10 are here. So I also will read off those who are here first. Leslie Bravo. <laughs> 
Jasmine Diaz. <laughs> Lizbeth Diaz. <laughs> Jacob Lamb. <laughs> Chananye Atonye. Yeah. Yeah. And Tyler Smalley. And our four who couldn't make it this evening, Christina Gutierrez, Braden Huang, Cesar Garcia Lopez, and Marcelo Perez. Thank you. Okay. Um, next up, we have South High School, and we have the principal, Travis Rogers. Good evening, we have 12 here tonight from South High School. Chris Bowie. <laughs> Maya Grub. Diego Avalar. Anthony Martinez. Cassie Bonner. Lydia Harper. Tristan Sauls. Christiana Pittman, Ruben Freye Jarman, Eric Moreno, Elena Pineda, and Bowie Dara. All right, I think we're going to try. I know it's going to get a little uncomfortable. We're going to try to squeeze you down a little bit more so we can get some more students in here. So next up, we'll have Southeast High School, and we'll have Principal Ben Mitchell here to read the names for his students. Well, good afternoon, everybody. I'm proud Principal Ben Mitchell of Southeast High School, and we have some of our great graduates here. So I'm going to read their names off first. So when I read your name off, can you step forward so they know who's who? So first is Adolphine Mulimba Mbala. And can I just do a short brag? She came to the United States in 2019. That was her freshman year. She now speaks four languages because English was not one of her first languages. And she'll be going to WSU also. Next is Isaiah Silman. Next is Jada Hall. I call her vice president. Nikayla Thomas. <laughs> Ms. Superintendent, I want to brag. She's going to your alma mater, Langston. Yeah. <laughs> and last but not least that's here is Najee Dixon, who is going to the flagship HBCU, Howard University. And I also want to read off uh, the students who are not here, Sam Samuel Ekenem, Diego Puga, and Aaron Baker. Those are our Southeast Golden <laughs> Buffalo. All right. Next up, we have West High, and we have Mark Jolliffe, the principal at West High, to share his names. Good evening, and uh, proud uh, Principal Mark Jolliffe of Wichita West High School. Go Pioneers, and here we are. First, uh, our first three, that, uh, and the three that are present, uh, you hear Perez Gonzalez. <laughs> Katie Vialta. and Israel Cervantes. <laughs> I 
also read our other uh, remaining names that weren't able to make it tonight, whether baseball or other events, but Caden Dotson, Ava Tate, Emily Corral, Alondra Sifuentes, Sa Sahus Shura, Haley Trailer, and Anival Ramos. So. Before we dismiss all of you, because I know it's probably a little crowded over there, um, I, can you do me a favor? If you are a teacher or administrator um, or staff member of one of these students, can you please stand so we can recognize you? Thank you. And most importantly, if you are a family member in this of one of these students up here, can you please stand so we can also recognize you? All right. Thank you, everybody, for being here and showing the support. Um, congratulations to all of you. We know that it is a lot of hard work to get here. Um, it just doesn't come easily. So we know that you put in the effort. Thank you guys. Good luck on your future. I know that the um, staff are going to miss you guys greatly, but um, can we just give one more round of applause? Congratulations to all of them. Oh my goodness, what a wonderful opportunity to recognize students who've worked very hard and done the right thing. And they're gonna come back and do us proud, I know it. So, absolutely, Dr. Thompson. As, as people are leaving, I, I go ahead and keep leaving, but I also wanna take this opportunity to not just thank just the teachers and parents and community, I would like to also thank all staff because there are people such as secretaries and custodians and counselors and everyone else that also play a big important impact on students. So I want to make sure that I acknowledge all staff who have supported these students to help them to get to this point. So let's give a round of applause to everyone. Okay, we'll give just a moment to clear the the audience says they want to leave. Because we have bigger and better things still to celebrate. <laughs> We've got great things going on in this district. Okay. Next item, Patrick. Next item. 2022 Challenge Award recipients. Okay. If you don't mind, we'll pause for just another yep. minute so they can close the doors. What a joy to have our students here. They've worked hard. They deserve to be recognized by everyone. It was special to see their faces and it was also really terrific to turn around and watch the faces of the parents and the family members in the audience, the pride that they have in their young people, in, in our kids, was uh, really special. And that's what it's all about when it comes right down to it. So we celebrated excellence with our students and their achievements. Ms. Kingry mentioned the village, the elementary schools and the middle schools that it takes to help our graduating seniors get to where they are. So our second good news item tonight um, gives us the opportunity to welcome two familiar faces back to the podium, Ms. Betty Arnold and Mr. Jim McNeese, who represent Wichita schools on the Kansas State Board of Education and who have made several appearances in our district to celebrate our challenge award-winning schools for the year. So I saw several of you in the audience. If you are a Challenge Award principal, then you are. Why don't you all go ahead, please, and come forward. So as Mr. Ar Ms. Ms. Arnold and Mr. McNeese 
have the opportunity to celebrate you, you can receive the congratulations of our board. As they're coming down, I just want to echo the thanks to Betty Arnold and Jim McNeese for coming tonight because it, it, we appreciate what the state board does and how they help us and it's really nice to see you in our district and at our presentation. So thank you very much for being here. Good evening, President Logan, Vice President Albert, board members, and Superintendent Thompson. Thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of your good news presentation, for it is indeed good news when we can celebrate 13 schools within 259 that have received the Challenge Awards. This award is based on outstanding and uncommon test results and state assessments based on uh, uh, math and reading for the 2022 school year. Those schools that we recognize, and I do want to thank the Marketing and Communication Department because they just went all out and helped us celebrate each individual school as we presented them with their awards. Those schools are, at this point, I have to put on readers. <laughs> Elementary, we have Cleveland Traditional Magnet, Earhart, <laughs> Earhart Environmental Magnet, Griffith Elementary, Kinsler Elementary, McLean Science and Technology Magnet, Minaha Core Magnet, Ortiz Elementary, Price Harris Communication Magnet, K-8, we celebrated Hartsman Dual Language, And middle school was Allison Traditional Magnet. Pleasant Valley Middle School. Mayberry Cultural and Fine Arts Magnet. And Wilbur Middle School. If I could have penned another name for this award, it would be in spite of. I like that. You see, in spite of the challenges that these buildings faced, when we look at the economic status, when we look at the high predictors that marginalize the success of these buildings, they emerged successful. They said, in spite of this, they put their best foot forward and with so much appreciation, for what you have done for those students. I celebrate you, I thank you again uh, for all that you have done. Because when we say all students, guys, that means all. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter the economics. It doesn't matter the race. It doesn't matter. You are a student in Wichita Public Schools. You have celebrated those students. You have done well. And I get emotional because you touch a part of me that appreciates the career choice that you've made. And so from the bottom of my heart, and I am going to leave a few words for Jim to say. <laughs> <laughs> but from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. And thank you, board members, for allowing us to publicly celebrate these great buildings in 259. I always feel like there's so much great stuff going on, but very little attention. And if I had a pom-pom for each one of these buildings, I still would be cheering. So, guys, thank you so much for all you've done. And I'm going to allow Mr. McNeese to at least have a word. Think of 
something too. Did you write something? <laughs> <laughs> uh, congratulations to uh, these principals for the schools they represent, and they do represent them. The uh, success of a school starts with a principal, keeps going with the faculty, it's the buy-in of the students, it's the buy-in of the parents, and it's the support that you as a board give them. You know, it's a, it's a collaborative effort, it's a team effort. But on, on behalf of the State Board of Education, I want to send our appreciation for the hard work and dedication that you have just demonstrated in schools that if we were in a betting system, you would not be the, the ones we'd bet on. You know, the odds were stacked against you. You got your students and your faculty and your communities to buy into success. So thank you very much and look forward to seeing you again next year. Thank you. Well, we understand as a board, this is a big deal for schools to win this award. So we are so, so excited to have all these principals. And 14 schools, that's a lot of schools. Wichita is doing a whole lot of things right out in our buildings. So thank you, principals, for being here. It seems only fitting that our third good news item tonight falls during Teacher Appreciation Week and falls just after one of our Challenge Award schools happens to claim our honoree as one of their very own. So I'm going to invite Mr. Tim Elson forward. And I told him that I would try not to embarrass him and say a few words about how amazing <laughs> he is and why he's standing before you today to be recognized. So for 35 years, the DeVore Family Foundation, a private family foundation in our community, has had enough uh, gratitude and respect for public servants that they have selected an honoree from the Wichita Public Schools, from the city of Wichita, and from Sedgwick County to be honored as Excellence in Public Service Award recipients. And I can't help but smile as I look across the table at Ms. Hedrick because she was one of those award honorees when she worked for our school district. Not only did, has the DeVore Family Foundation celebrated and honored and held in high esteem these individuals, but they also put their family's um, good fortune behind the awards in the form of a check that the honorees receive that they can use to apply to whatever goodness in the community that, that they support. So for 35 years, we've been ganging up on award recipients because it's a surprise <laughs> when, when we come out and let them know that they've been selected, and this year was no exception, right? <laughs> <laughs> so Tim thought he was going to the zoo for Earth Day and took some of his Science Olympiad students there. Uh, Tim is an eighth grade science teacher at Wilbur Middle School and is well known for quality Science Olympiad teams. And I think you all had just qualified or received science Olympiad recognition at the state level. Second place in the state. Second place in the state. So he was having a great day and celebrating with the kiddos right near the petting zoo. And Mr. Lynn, his principal, was having an important one-on-one -on -one conversation with him over to the <laughs> side by the barn. While we were all pouring out and waiting to conspire, when he walked over towards us. And I think by the time he saw his parents in the crowd, that's usually the moment when they realize <laughs> they've been had. Going on. <laughs> I was watching your face. He saw his family. He knew something was up. And we were all able to congratulate him for being selected as the 2023 Excellence in Public Service Award recipient from the Wichita Public Schools. <laughs> So the unique thing about this award is that it recognizes 
individuals from the three honoring organizations for not only the amazing things they do in the classroom or at work, but also the amazing things they do in the community. And I'm gonna give you a few highlights. This doesn't begin to scratch the service, but it gives you an idea of the servant heart that Tim has and the, um, the love that he has for his students. He's actively involved in Science Olympiad, actively involved in Kansas Association of Teachers of Science, instrumental in creating regional conferences for teachers for no cost, benefiting his peers, facilitator of regional Science Olympiad competition. You heard about the statewide success of his team. He heads the school's recycling program. He's an avid coach at Wilbur. He's a mentor for second year science teachers in our district and has a model classroom that we use to show new teachers how it should be done. And he has received the district's Good Apple Award three times. So uh, there is more that we could share, um, great stories that we heard from your students. And in fact, it was a parent who nominated him for this award, which I think speaks volumes about the quality of instructional leader and caring human that we have in classrooms. So Tim, on behalf of all of us, the Wichita Board of Education, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> I just want to say a couple quick things. Um, first off, um, because Betty Arnold had pointed out in spite of uh, Wilbur Middle School, um, in spite of, of our demographics and, and who we are, we um, fought really hard. We took second place at our state uh, tournament. And um, I wanted to give a quick plug about the national tournament because it's going to be taking place this year in uh, Wichita State University, uh, Friday, May 19th, and Saturday the 20th. So if you want to see national STEM competitors, it's open to the public if you want to stop by and see that. Uh, they take the top 120 schools from the entire nation, including a little bit from Canada and Japan. Um, and out of those 120 schools, I wanted to point out that uh, in spite of where we are, Wilbur was ranked 121st. So. We missed it by this much. <laughs> But I did want to uh, also real quick uh, thank all the people that uh, support me in all the things that I do because I do not do this by myself. I am not a self-made man and I, I cannot do what I do without the support of everybody, including my uh, lovely fiance and daughter who are in the room right now. If you guys want to stand up and wave. <laughs> Uh, and, and the whole village that was mentioned earlier, uh, including Mr. Lynn. Mr. Lynn, could you please stand yeah. up for me? Yeah. He has been one of my biggest cheerleaders. Uh, my, my superintendent, could we please give a round of applause for her last? Thank you, Ms. Thompson, for everything. Dr. Thompson. Um, and, and everybody else on the board, and my custodian that takes out my trash, and just everybody. Like, I couldn't do it without all of you guys, so thank you. Thank you for allowing us the time to celebrate this evening. What wonderful good news. Students, uh, buildings, great teachers. Man, we don't get better than this. So thanks to all of them for being here. This is a joy. Next item, please. Next item, under reports, Service Employees International. Welcome, Esau. We're glad to see you. Good evening. Thank you, President Logan, Vice President Albert, Dr. Thompson, board members. Uh, quite a bit of positivity this evening, I see. A um, uh, lot, of, lot of good things are happening in USD 259. Um, I think it's about time for the disc jockeys to start queuing the Alice Cooper records, <laughs> and uh, everybody's kind of ready to get on and have the school year be over with. Um, I think we've successfully gotten through it. Um, I do appreciate those of you who've taken the time to talk with me about some of the teacher and paraprofessional concerns um, and, and working on the behavior work group with us. I think that we've had some productive meetings um, in those. I really appreciated the ones where the school board members, uh, one, or, one or two of you showed up. I felt like those were probably the most productive meetings and I appreciate your contribution uh, to those things. And so, you know, at this point in time, we just hope to continue to work 
on those issues and continue to have an open line of communication and we hope that next school year is ready to start and move through with a new direction and, and get things where we want them to be. So thank you very much for letting us have an evening to talk to you and let you know what's going on. And, and I, I can't say that I've stood up and down so much since the last time I was an usher at a Catholic wedding. So uh, thanks for the exercise. <laughs> Next item. Next item under reports, United Teachers of Wichita. Welcome, Katie. Hi. Good evening, uh, Superintendent Dr. Thompson, BOE President Cheryl Logan, BOE Vice President Diane Albert, and BOE members. Dr. Thompson, I did not know it was your last meeting, and you have just done so much for the school district, and um, your positivity, your energy, like we, we appreciate you, and I know that um, everyone's going to really miss you, so thank you for all you do. Um, today kicks off Teacher Appreciation Week. Our teachers go above and beyond every day for our students. There are so many ways that we, that we can show that we appreciate our teachers, but honestly the best way is by electing pro-education candidates who will fund our schools and fully fund special education. I wanted to let you know that we recently passed along our workload survey to district leadership. Overall, we received a strong response rate from our staff with 1,861 responses from certified staff. In terms of morale, we're pleased to see that more than three quarters of certified staff reported that USD 259 is a good place to work and approximately 80% of our certified staff reported that they intend to return to their building next school year. However, there are still some areas of concern that emerged from the workload survey. For example, there's a significant number of respondents that reported that students do not always follow codes of conduct, and there is a lack of support for some instructional initiatives. As for student conduct, we implemented a behavior work group this year, and I am so thankful that many of you attended the meetings. I felt that they were very productive when you were there, and we appreciate you. I was very hopeful after attending the March meeting, and I know Julie and Diane were there, thank you for being there, that we were going in a great direction, but I was disappointed when nothing came from that April meeting and our team was told that it was advisory and that nothing may come from the months of time spent discussing these important issues. I do have two questions for you to ask your leadership team regarding the behavior work group. The first one is, what goals were set for the group to accomplish the school year? The second one is, what will be implemented from this work group next school year to help improve student behavior? I'm having a really hard time telling our teachers that we spent an entire school year meeting on this important issue and that we have no communication or action to show from it. I recently sent a request for a BOE policy regarding an ADA appeal process. This is my third request for a conversation with the board about the need for this process and I look forward to your response soon. Thank you guys for everything you do for our teachers and I know that um, I just appreciate you always answer our teachers' emails and calls anytime we have questions. I'm Cheryl, you've an answered my call, I think, at 9.30 at night, so <laughs> thank you for always being available. Um, we know this is a volunteer position, and um, our teachers appreciate you. So thank you. Thank you. Next item. Next item, public communications. Uh, we do have three speakers tonight. Uh, speakers are allowed three minutes, and you may not talk about specific buildings, teachers, or students as, in your presentations. Our first uh, person to speak to it is Jesse Broski. And I apologize if, if I mispronounced your last name. <laughs> Um, hello, President Logan, Superintendent Dr. Thompson, and the rest of the members of the board. Thank you for allowing me the time to speak today. I'd first like to congratulate again all of the, uh, the students we've seen up here today and all the faculty and staff. Uh, it's really great to see them being uh, just appreciated for, for the hard work they, they do. Um, anyway, I'm addressing you all as over the course of the past month, our state legislature has passed multiple bills into law that will negatively impact our LGBT plus youth. As many of you may know, House Bill 2238, or the Fairness in Women's Sports Act, 
This allows trans individuals from participating on sports teams associated with the gender they identify as. Senate Bill 180, also known as the Women's Bill of Rights, disallows trans individuals from using the restrooms and locker rooms of the gender they identify as. Engaging in gender consistent sports and being included in gender consistent facilities are part of what we call social transitioning, which is an integral part of the trans experience. I believe that these new laws will have deleterious effects on the mental well being of our transgender youth. Turban et al. 2021 found that children who can comfortably socially transition are less likely to abuse cannabis. The study also found that adoles adolescents who socially transition are likely to experience adverse mental health outcomes, including attempting suicide, unless they are protected from harassment during their transition. Olsen et al. 2016 found that trans children who are supported in their gender identities experience mental health difficulties at the same rates as cisgender students, whereas uh, trans children who are not supported experience higher levels of distress. These st studies are some of many that highlight the importance of social transitioning from our, for our students' mental well-being. I can also go on about the impacts this can also have on their physical health and hormonal transitioning of our trans students, but I can't do this topic justice in only three minutes. Regardless, it can be said that these new laws have, may have unexpected consequences for our students' mental and physical health. Fortunately, it is possible for the officials, administration, and faculty of USD 259 to help ameliorate the effects of these laws. For example, the Fairness in Women's Sports Act allows the creation of co-ed sports teams, which may include all individuals, regardless of sex assigned at birth and gender identity. The creation of co-ed sports team allows for the inclusion of our trans students, positively impacting their physical and mental well-being. It additionally demonstrates to our students who are assigned female at birth that they are not inherently less capable or less athletic than students who were assigned male at birth. Furthermore, single person gender neutral restrooms may help comfort individuals who would otherwise be forced to use the restroom of the gender they do not identify with. These are just some of the several op options the board can take to help support our trans youth. I look forward to seeing what other routes the board may develop. And I also want to add, this is especially, uh, I think, worthwhile to mention, considering this week is Children's Mental Health Awareness Week. So kind of consider these in light of all of that. I thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Next person is uh, Mary Drury. Welcome, Mary. Thank you. I come to you from Texas, but I grew up here in Wichita, Kansas. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to present to your school Thank board you. tonight. My name is Mary Drury, and I am a chapter leader with foreign links around the globe, better known as FLAG. FLAG is a U.S. Department of State designated sponsor for J-1 visa exchange programs. Or to put it more simply, we match busy, everyday American, host, American families with an international high school student to host for a school year. Our students come from South America, Asia, Europe, and even Africa to experience what is likely to be, what it, what it is like to be a typical American teenager. This year will be our 30th year to participate in the J-1 visa exchange program. We have been assigned visas to match approximately 500 students with a volunteer host family for this next school year. FLAG is in the Wichita area, the Wichita School District this week to promote our programs to your elementary school families. I will personally deliver 20,000 flyers to your elementary school families, uh, teachers, school administrators, area churches, and local community. By the end of the week, we will have sent home approved flyers with each of your elementary school students, tabled at least three athletic events, and have met with several high school and other administrators within the district. We hope this is just the beginning to a stronger and growing presence within your district. As of today, there are still approximately 100 spots remaining in USD 259 for international exchange students this year. I've told that you've never met, you've never met, uh, reached your maximum before. We appreciate your district's willingness to make so many spots for our international exchange students and to work with us as we support our grassroots international diplomacy efforts we have promised to carry out on behalf of the U.S. Department of State. You see, very rarely will the everyday American family be able to make such a difference on a global scale. 
However, by opening their homes for a school year, they are building a bridge that supports international friendships, views, and kindness around the world. They are fostering a positive view of Americans abroad. Included in the handouts I brought this evening is additional information about FLAG and our programs and information on the two community outreach events we are hosting while we are here in this area this week. I will also be around until the end of the school board meeting and if any of your high school principals or other school administrators has questions about FLAG or how our FLAG or how FLAG supports our students. Thank you for being a partner to FLAG and to all exchange programs, um, organizations in this effort. Together, we're building friendships around the world. We're making a difference on a global scale. Thank you. Thank you. Kareem Williams, Karima Williams. Good evening. <coughs> Hello. When you open Webster's Dictionary and look up the word leadership, the definition reads as follows. The action of leading a group of people or an organization. Integrity, communication, influence, empathy, courage, and respect. These and so many more are a few qualities that described Dr. Alicia Thompson. For the last 25 years, six as the USD 259 superintendent, you have served us with dignity, grace, and poise. And today, we simply say thank you. My name is Karima Williams, and I am the career specialist here at Wichita North High School. I'm also a Wichita native and a proud USD 259 product. I attended Lee Overture Elementary Robinson and Southeast High School. I've had the opportunity to leave Wichita and to return and could not be filled with more admiration and pride as I see you as our superintendent. I would like to take a few moments to express our appreciation and gratitude on behalf of JAG, Kansas, and our students. Never one to take the easy or most traveled road, Dr. Thompson, you have courageously led us through both good and turbulent times. You masterfully led us as we went from face-to-face -face interaction, education, to Zoom and team classroom settings. You have been battle-tested, questioned, doubted, and even shown disdain, and yet you've always remained stoic, encouraged, compassionate, and decisive throughout your serve. You've You've always remained accessible, approachable, and willing to listen to anyone within our district. Rather a popular decision or not, you have always kept the students as your number one main priority, helping to ensure higher graduation rates, provide additional VOTEC and, and trade school training, and bringing back culture and pride within our walls. Sorry. You gave um, little brown girls a face they could identify with. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You serve that is proof through prayer, hard work, and staying the course, you can truly achieve anything and everything. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that you did this all while being a wife, a mother, and a community, and serving the community of Wichita in your various board positions. Dr. Thompson, you are to be saluted. Saluted for your vision of our education system, saluted for your tenacity, saluted for your gift and your grind. I can only imagine the long hours, many meetings, and attention to detail to successfully navigate our district. Dr. Thompson, thank you. Thank you for, thank you for leaving your mark moving forward. Thank you for keeping the students your number one priority, and thank you for supporting JAGK and other leadership programs. You, Dr. Thompson, has served as our modern day Miss Nancy Garvey. We are so proud of you, we appreciate you, and we will miss you. Thank you for your service to the district.
Um, I have my class watch the school board meetings because, you know, they like to feel like every decision is one person's or they don't really know how it works. So we watch the meetings. And so um, I had them come up with words that describe Dr. Thompson. And so you will see in the uh, picture frame are all the words that the students gave me um, to describe her. And um, number one was beautiful. So, you know, the students think you're very beautiful. So, so thank you very much. Thank you very much. We appreciate your coming. Y your words speak for, for all of us, so thank you. Oh, she got her popcorn and hot tamales. She's ready to retire. <laughs> Next item, please. Next item, consent. Uh, Ernestine, do you have anything you'd like to pull? No, I do not. Stan? No consent agenda items to pull. Um, I have nothing to pull. Diane? I do not have anything to pull. Julie? Nothing to pull. Uh, Kathy? I just have one, E11. Okay. E11. Okay. Could we have a motion to accept the rest of the items? I, I move that we um, accept the consent ag agenda other than item E11. E11, right. Okay. Is there a second? Is it E7 or E11? E11. Okay. E11. Okay. Uh, I don't Did have a second. I'll second it. Okay. It was motion made with by uh, Julie and seconded by Kathy. Please it, register your vote. The agenda passes 6-0. Let's look at E11. Kathy? I think this is going to be for Mr. Luke Newman. You know me, I'm always asking questions. But doesn't a teacher like that when a student asks questions? <laughs> Not a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> good, good answer. <laughs> okay, I'll get you for that. <laughs> okay, under kitchen remodels, um, it says various sites. I, I just want to know what criteria is used to determine which buildings need <coughs> kitchen remodels? Or is it on a rotation basis or a priority needs basis? Well, unfortunately, I don't see Fabian here. Oh. Um, we, we relied heavily on, on him and the nutrition oh. services folks. My to, question was, um, what is the criteria to determine which building is going to be selected to get these kitchens remodeled? Is it a rotation basis or a priority needs basis? A combination of a little bit of all of that. Okay. Um, so typically they have projects that they have and they have um, how much they would potentially cost. So some years we may have a little bit of money and then some years there's a little bit more money. And then you have to look to see, you know, where in the process, you know, how it's going to impact um, the, the um, enhancing what's going to happen and doing the lunch experience for mm -hmm. students. So, for instance, one year, um, everybody kind of got something. They, we, got, we were able to kind of take each of our kitchen areas and remodel them totally. If you, go in, if you were in before, they were remodeled. You see that it was, you know, the walls were kind of plain. It was just kind of pain in here. But then the students were able to design things, and they were able to remodel um, physically the space to make it more appealing. So they were like, sometimes you go to secondary, you'll see them sitting in stools and they'll, they'll be sitting like at a restaurant table like things instead of the tables that we used to fold in and fold out. We, a lot of the schools, we don't have those in our schools anymore. So one year they did all, they, they uh, prioritized and each school was able to design and then they were able to get. This particular time, this year, the money is there and they looked at some of the needs that they had. So there are schools that may not have tray uh, ledges for them to put their trays on to pick their food up. So they, there's a variety of reasons why or how they make decisions. It's basically um, the need uh, who's, who, it could be who's next in line, or it could be the cost, how much money is available for the projects, and can they afford which ones they can afford to do. Um, so it's just a variety of ways. There's a few of the elementary schools in District 5 that um, are in dire need of more space for a kitchen because the students are eating in the gym, and it's, I think I'm Peterson might be one of them, and Benton might be another one. So and I didn't know if they're on the list. 
Okay, so if you're talking about more space. And the kitchen. There are some schools during the bond, those expenses would not, you to build more space would not be something that we would be able to afford to do with nutrition services money, because that money is not that much. Um, so if you're looking to add additional square footage to a building, you're gonna be looking at more things such as a bond issue or a large capital outlay program of those types of things. And as we are looking at schools, um, for the facilities plan, mm -hmm. those are all things that you'll be able to see in those reports. And then at some point, the board is going to be able to prioritize where those large capital outlay expenses will lie. Okay, great. If that so, makes sense. Very so well. So if I can add okay. to that, yes. Um, what I do know about it, I don't know exactly why these specific sites were chosen, but I do know that their their goal, the intent of the projects, is to. Um, give them to create more satellite kitchens basically to where they can prepare more food on site rather than having to do it at the service center and then bring it out to the buildings mm -hmm. so it's just expanding their ability to mm -hmm. cook out at the sites and kind of reduce that load centrally is my understanding but I don't know strategically why they picked which sites wasn't there a time when our schools did cook the meals long time ago so there was a long time ago and we removed a lot of those kitchens uh -huh. that where they cooked um i think i know cessna had one back in the day and chisholm trail had one and so those kitchens i am not sure exactly what has been done with those kitchens but i know that they've been remodeled to something that is usable today but uh, we used to cook okay. some schools did i don't know if all did but i know that some did cook on site okay mm -hmm. Thank you. Sorry, I'd I couldn't answer your question. No, that's okay. You thoroughly, did fine, Mr. Newman. Thank you very much. <laughs> and you I'd can like answer, ask questions anytime you like. I, I don't know. <laughs> okay. I'd like to make a motion to accept E11 kitchen remodels, various sites. Second. Motion was made by Kathy and seconded by Julie that we accept the motion. Please cast your vote. Motion passes 6 0. Next item. Next item, under policy, second review, proposed update of student records and enrollment services policy. Okay, we did have this on our agenda last month, and this is our second read, so we will be asking for a vote tonight. Are there any questions or concerns on this policy? I am seeing none. Do I have a motion to accept? I'll, I'll move. I move to uh, adopt current policy 5505. Second. Motion was made by Stan, seconded by Diane, that we accept board policy 5505 as has been presented to us. Please cast your vote. Motion passes 6 0. Next item. Next item, under finance, budget report. So we have our two fine ladies um, here to visit with us this evening um, around our budget as we have always uh, kept uh, this uh, rotation. We've started this work um, in February, um, and so here we are in May. We are going to spend some time visiting with you around ESSER dollars and um, having some conversations about this. We wanna make sure that we'll also take this clip and have it available on our website underneath our ESSER dollars so that if there's anyone who are, is interested in learning more about the district and what we have been using the funds for and the things that have been impacted by the uh, COVID do uh, relief dollars, our ESSER funds, they are available there as well. So without further ado, I have two of my wonderful colleagues here to uh, share um, our ESSER report. Good evening, President Logan, Superintendent Thompson, Vice President Albert, and members of the board. Uh, I'm Susan Willis, your Chief Financial Officer, and with me is Addie Lowell, our Director of Budgeting. Uh, I will be giving the, the PowerPoint tonight, but Addie will be answering the questions <laughs> <laughs> because she is the ESSER expert. Um, I think tonight certainly has been a night to uh, celebrate our points of pride. And really, um, and a lot of this, if not the majority, has been under Superintendent Thompson's leadership. Um, in no small way, um, ESSER funding, the historic investment in public schools, um, 
I think this is a major point of pride, and she should she should take this moment and, and enjoy all of the all of the information we're going to present tonight um, is in no small part due to her her leadership. So well, we thank you for for helping us through um, what has been a few a few challenging years, even even beyond COVID, even beyond some of the other things. But this this funding has been no small um, assignment. I asked staff today, I said, well, how many accounts are we tracking? And they have 18,000 account lines open just for ESSER tracking purposes. So just to give you a, the volume of transactional data that's flowing through these awards. Um, we have been under two audits specifically that looked at ESSER transactions, and we've had no expenditure findings related to these funds. So there is a lot of good work. It's not perfect. But with, when you're talking almost $270 million worth of spend in a three-year period, um, we're doing pretty well. So we did want to take the opportunity tonight to kind of walk through where we're at. Um, and I'll first start with a reminder of the infamous acronyms. Um, <laughs> we'll start, obviously, like we typically do with uh, the first uh, COVID relief package was, was actually called CARES. We, we called it CARES because that was the the name of the federal act, the, Coronavi the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act. Within that act that was passed just a couple weeks after um, kind of the shutdown due to COVID, we, um, the ESSER fund was created, and that's, that ESSER is Elementary and Secondary Emergency Relief Fund. So within CARES, ESSER was created, but we didn't call it ESSER, we called it CARES. And so that lasted for about nine months until the second federal aid package was passed, the Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act. And so that created the second ESSER fund. So we now have an ESSER one and ESSER two. And then just a few months later in March of 21, a third package was passed, the American Rescue Plan. And then we have the third ESSER package. So tonight we will be talking about ESSER one, ESSER two, and ESSER three. Um, and so those, um, those are acronyms that you will make note of as we move forward. Our ESSER timeline has become a, a much shorter uh, slide, much less busy, because we are now down to the last 18 months of the ESSER period. Uh, tonight we're giving you an ESSER update. Um, at 9.30 of 23, we need to be done with ESSER 2. And then May of next year, we'll probably bring you a final kind of update of how uh, the, the final months will proceed. And then 930 of 24, we will be done with the third ESSER package. And then unless something happens at the federal level, um, we will be finished with federal COVID relief money. So let's talk a little bit about our ESSER funds in action. If you remember this slide, we've presented this a few times. Um, as we were planning for the ESSER dollars, we have really tried to keep these four important points at the focus and at the forefront. First of all, obviously, the initiatives that we looked at had to be allowable under the ESSER rules. There were a number of criteria, um, 15 or so different um, allowable categories. And so whatever initiative the district wanted to follow, it had to fit into one of those 15 categories. It had to be vetted through a state committee and then it had to be approved at the KSDE offices and then by the Kansas Board of Education. So there were many points of review as these initiatives moved through um, the system. We also thought it was very important that whatever we were doing, it needed to align to the strategic plan because that's that, we set those goals in 2018. We didn't want to start on different paths. We wanted to bring those learning loss gaps that had been created due to COVID in our strategic plan kind of fix those things. So we're gonna show you a few um, data points tonight where I think we're accomplishing those goals. Um, initiatives should have had measurable outcomes with data to support. And obviously, as we come towards the end of the ESSER period, either the initiative will have an end date or we will have some sort of other sustainability plan. So just to kind of share uh, just a few data points, this, these are third grade reading proficiency numbers for kindergarten through fifth grade. And I, if you're going to ask me details on this slide, I'm going to have to point to Dr. Thompson because <laughs> this is not my wheelhouse. But this was some information we presented to Kisa last week when they were visiting on site. And I thought some of it was very powerful, particularly since we have embedded these ESSER dollars in those same categories as, as our strategic plan. This is a good example. Um, we are investing about 
three million is that right in letters mm -hmm. about three million dollars in letters and so that is a huge investment of professional development for teachers in addition to that focus on on that third grade reading proficiency goal um, that 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 these three areas became non-negotiable for our elementary um, teachers and you can see over the 2021 20, school year the 21 22 school year and the 22 23 school year particularly in kindergarten those letter name um, frequent is that right? Frequencies? Yeah, no, fluency. Fluency, I'm gonna get it. Letter name fluencies, um, the letter sound fluency, right? And the word segmenting scores have all increased year over year. And so we're really seeing the, the impact, I think, of focus and the impact of the teachers that are doing that, le that science of reading, that letters training. And then as you go into the word segmenting and nonsense word fluency, in the first grade, you're seeing, again, increases going in those years. And then you're getting into second and fifth grade, where we have um, whatever that acronym is, the CBMR over those years. Again, you're still seeing growth, which is, again, a, a, a lot of what we're trying to accomplish. We had loss. We want to see growth back up those scales. And we're seeing it. So not only are we meeting our strategic plan goals, but our ESSER dollars are supporting that. So that to me is a very powerful statement that our dollars are accomplishing what we've wanted them to accomplish. I think to, as you look at that second goal of our graduation, getting that, those graduation rates to where we want them to be, that 2018 to 2022 period of moving from 74% to 80.4%, a 6.4% increase, particularly the 1% jump from last year um, with 21 subgroups showing improvement over that period of time, that is in large part due to focus on this area, but in no small part due to ESSER funding on initiatives. If you look at the right side of this slide, you, summer school, that's an ESSER funded initiative. Um, within reach, an ESSER funded initiative. Restorative practices, an ESSER funded initiative. Um, extended learning opportunities, additional counselors, the tutoring, mentoring, those are all ESSER funded initiatives. So we're seeing impact from those ESSER dollars in our strategic plan goals. And then finally, just to show, um, this is the district average ACT composite score over the past few years. We had been cranking along and showing improvement. We had that dip, but here, here we are, we're coming back. So again, we're seeing those areas of improvement in, in no small part due to ESSER ESSER funding. So I think, again, we have a lot to be proud of. Um, these are just three data points that we're tracking. Um, there's, there's a lot of other sub-tracking mechanisms going on, but we wanted to share those tonight. Okay, now we're going to get into a little bit of the weeds of the expenditures and kind of where we sit. So as of March 31st, so that was the last quarterly report we sent to the state, um, we had basically there are five pots of ESSER money. The ESSER 1, which has been spent for a while, right? That was the original um, allocation. We were awarded $17.9 million. This was the only award that had a non-public component to it. So we spent a little, about, about just shy of $17 million, and the rest went to the non-pub schools. It, and then also within that particular award, there was a special ed component. And so the ESSER 1 had those two sections. ESSER 2 also had a special ed component, but we were not required to serve non-pub schools. They had a different funding source for the non-pub, so we didn't, we didn't have to split our award. And then our ESSER 3 direct was the final award, and there was no special ed component. So of our awards, the $17.9 million of ESSER 1 has been fully spent, and it's been fully spent for a while. The ESSER 1 special education funding has been fully spent. The ESSER 2 direct, which was $75.5 million, all but $2.5 million has been spent. So with that, we have just $2.5 million to spend by 930 of 23. So we are in great shape to complete that award. Um, ESSER 2 special education has been spent in full, and ESSER 3, almost $170 million award, we have spent almost 90 million of that money to this point. And so we have about $80 million left to go. So really, I think we're very well situated to kind of complete the ESSER period um, and have this money fully spent by the end of the reporting periods. 
So just as a reminder, here's the ESSER 1 kind of breakdown. Um, again, if you recall, schools were shut down. We, we, we kind of scrambled with learning packets and some licensing in those last three months of 20, and then we had some remote learning as we went into the 2021 school year. So we basically geared the district up very quickly into a, some sort of one-to-one -one student technology system. Um, it, that kind of, we had hoped to have that everything in August of that school year. It kind of went into the fall um, because of, of backlog. But we spent two-thirds of that first ESSER package on technology. Uh, we spent uh, about, uh, not quite 16%, on, on uh, personal protective equipment, COVID testing, vaccine clinics, COVID sick leave for staff, just to basically to kind of maintain those services through the, the first school year. Um, we spent about 12% on, again, those learning plans, which included the online curriculum license that was extending Dreambox and Lexia and those type of things, getting more, um, more access so that students from home could access those, those intervention services. And then we spent about 3% on sanitizing supplies. 6% of the first ESSER package did go to the non-pub schools. And you've seen, you've seen this chart and kind of the percentages have varied a, a bit, but this is the final final. This is what we've reported to the state as we're done with ESSER 1. We're not adjusting anymore. Okay, so then we have the second ESSER package. Again, through March 31st, this one's got a little bit more breakdown. It's a little bit larger award. Um, again, a good chunk of it, 22% um, went to um, student and staff technology, primarily staff, hardware, and software um, as we moved into the second package. Um, uh, over a third of ESSER II we have, um, we have designated for retention strategies that we spend it on bonuses for staff because we needed our people to stay and work for us and not go elsewhere. <laughs> Um, and there were a lot of stresses for staff during those periods of time. Um, we believe that was money well spent to retain as many of our talented staff as we could possibly do. 29.3% um, was maintaining operations. This was to prevent cuts because we lost 2,600 students during the COVID period. And that the board was committed to not, um, not reducing staff, we were still Feeling the effects of COVID, we were still having um, significant staff absences. It was not the time to be cutting staff in order to pay bills and give wage packages. So we, we did spend some of our ESSER just to maintain operations. And then 9% um, has been spent through the end of March on principal and school needs. So this was money specifically given um, in an allocation to each and every school for them to look at what was happening in their building and respond accordingly with mentors, tutoring, additional supervision support, whatever they needed, they had a bucket to, to actually do the things in their building specific to their, uh, their, their stakeholders. Um, and then we had um, just a little bit that we charged um, the fund for indirect, which is basically people like us, um, HR, all of these support services that we all have time in ESSER funding, but we're not directly funded, so we can actually charge the fund a little bit, so we did. Um, and so that is kind of where ESSER 2 landed as of March 31st. As we approach the end of the school year, almost the entire $2.46 million left in ESSER 2 is part of the school needs budget. Because again, we, even though it's March and there's only three months left to the fiscal year, remember we have five months worth of salary coming our way. So, and a lot of what the schools are doing are paying people, whether it's in the form of a secondary job or a supplemental or some additional staff. So that $2.46 million will be embedded in school needs. It will most likely be almost all paid out by June 30th. So that changes our chart just a little bit. You can see that school needs now are closer to 12%. That's where we're estimating that final breakdown of ESSER 2 will land. Okay, so in the ESSER 3 package, there were three additional requirements um, that, were, that we had to meet in order to, to spend these dollars. We must engage stakeholders as, as part of the planning process for ESSER 3. We must be sure that we're posting all of our safe return plans on our district website. 
and 20% of that balance must be focused on learning loss. So in no particular order, we did want to give you some of the major initiatives that are in uh, ESSER 3. And again, this is pretty high level. Within these categories, there are a lot of smaller initiatives. Um, mental health is, is a good example. We have some big categories of staffing, but there are a lot of initiatives going on kind of beyond what I've listed here. I mean, we could have, again, 18,000 account lines. There's a lot of different things we could list. Probably not one, one, something you want to do yet tonight. But again, in ESSER 3, we're focusing on facilities and air quality. We're focusing on mental health. We're focusing on um, support for high need students and any of the other learning loss activities, which would include additional pair hours, the letters we talked about, um, professional development for staff. Um, within the mental health um, category, that's where we find our behavior intervention teachers, um, a lot of the mentor, mentoring uh, positions like the Future Ready Advocates, senior liaisons, it's where restorative practices lives, um, the expansion of counselors and social workers, uh, additional security personnel, and then high need students, again, programs like Within Reach, the Wichita Acceleration Academy, um, some of the JAG programs, um, and then some of the extended learning opportunities. So again, pretty high level, a lot of things going on in ESSER 3. It's a, it's a, it's a big chunk of money. Um, we have spent almost 53% of it. We have planned 47%. So there isn't any ESSER kind of sitting on the sidelines waiting for somebody to come grab it, right? It's, it's allocated, it's got a plan, it's moving, right? So there, we're, we are essentially done with, with ESSER, and we'll cover that in a little bit more detail in a minute. But there, there, the planned pieces, the big planning is still kind of wrapped up in the facilities work. And that's where you'll see on this chart that kind of that highest green line, that's the majority of the work that still is unfinished is going to be in that facilities and air quality work, which makes sense because it takes longer to complete. We're still kind of in process there. So we have, we have, we have no concerns that we won't be finished, but it will take us the full period of time to kind of finish up. So kind of as we put that all in one kind of large graph, you see that on the right side, you've got the summer learning, all your after school and, and support programs and all of those other learning loss um, initiatives that we just talked about. Our learning loss category is at 31%. So we meet our 20% obligation plus, 30% um, is in, wrapped up in facilities and air quality work which we feel really good about because that's long lasting, right? That should pay dividends for years to come. And then the rest of it is kind of spread over, again, more retention work through bonuses, maintaining operations, technology, some support for high, uh, the high need students, and the mental health. So a lot of things are happening in SR3. I think that's a pretty good breakdown of, of the, uh, across the gamut of needs across the district, not that we met everyone's needs, right? Sometimes we had, did have to say no, although we said yes a lot, um, probably more than we've said in seven years. Um, so that will be kind of a hard habit to break <laughs> as we get towards the end of ESSERS. We'll have to get back into, well, we can do that. We just have to do something else. What are we not going to do, right? <laughs> um, okay, so we talked about the 20% the, 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 the goal. How did we do on the engagement? So the ESSER 3 engagement work started with a survey in the spring of 2021. We shared this with the board that the groups that, um, so that's parents, student, community, and staff all responded. Um, the three top priorities at that point, um, activities to address the unique needs of, of, of kind of our high needs groups, mental health services and supports, and providing principals and school leaders what they needed. And so I think we met, for the most part, most of those goals. Um, in addition to that, that initial engagement work, we formed an ESSER Financial Advisory Committee and we had stakeholders representing foster care, special education, Native American, um, English language learners, juvenile detention, um, the NAACP, city council, a whole lot of kind of varied, varied stakeholders to give input on what we were doing, what else could we do. Um, and we, we had a few meetings, we did a few emails back and forth, so we think we, we engaged um, you know, fairly well. Again, not, not necessarily perfect, 
um, because there's still a lot, there were still a lot of moving pieces, but I think we did, we did invite that engagement. We invited our UTW partners to engage, um, our SEIU partners to engage. We did a second survey in May of 22 to parents, staff, students, and community, and we will do a third survey um, here, uh, hopefully sometime in the next couple weeks to that same group. In addition to our website engagement opportunities, there is a link on the website that anyone at any time can provide feedback to, to what we're doing and how we're doing it, and then obviously through our various social media channels. So um, I think we did pretty good, pretty well through that whole process. Um, that second survey response, again, aligned very nicely with the first. Again, it was a lot of social emotional support, academic support for those that have the need, high needs for that support. Um, behavior, those type of things. So again, nothing that was really out of line from the first survey. So we, again, that kind of showed us that we needed to continue on with what we had been doing um, instead of starting something new. So that, that's, and I think that's what the third survey, keep doing what you're doing, we need those additional supports where we've identified them. And then we do have the usd259.org slash ESSER that does have our safety and operational plans. They really haven't changed since the beginning of the school year. Nothing has, nothing's really been modified there. Um, but essentially we have check marked all of those SR3 boxes um, and that we've engaged our stakeholders, we've posted our safe returns on the website and we've met the 20% learning loss. So again, we feel pretty good about where we're sitting with SR3. I am gonna add in at this time, she does not have it on here, but um, I was waiting for her to say it, but there's videos actually also that talk about the spending that has happened over the time um, that we've had our ESSER dollars that we've sent out to staff and whomever else would like to look at them because we wanna be very transparent about the dollars that we have been given and um, the success that the board, I mean, you know, that you all have asked, allowed us to be able to spend those things, but we wanna be accountable to you as well as sharing with our community um, what we've used those funds for and the impact that um, has happened because of those things. So again, I'm gonna encourage the community because across the state, you know, there's a lot of talk about these ESSER dollars and what people are spending them on and we're trying to do our best to ensure that everybody has access to what we have access to and that we're sharing the story of the ESSER dollars and what's happening and the impact that the dollars are having on our students. So please, 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 if you have not had the opportunity to look at the videos or to go to this website that she's just talked about, please go there if you're curious or if people ask you and say, what are those people doing with those dollars down there? send them to this website so that they can see exactly what is happening with the dollars um, that we have been given to do this work. Thank you, Dr. Thompson. So that's the good news of ESSER. The, the, the ESSER challenge is the exiting from those funds. And we've talked about this um, a few times uh, here at the board table, but we'd have, we, through this, almost three year process now, we have tried our best to focus on initiatives that were somewhat one time in nature. Um, the, the, the retention bonus would be a good example of that. Um, some of the, the personal protective equipment, those type of things where they were immediate response needs and we paid them and we, we can be done and we don't necessarily have to, it's not an ongoing expense. We couldn't avoid some ongoing expense in total. I mean, it's, it is $270 million. It's kind of tough to avoid people purchasing at that point. Um, so we have t about $20 million of direct ESSER funded positions. Um, that's 382 FTE, about 746 people being impacted um, by ESSER funding in some fashion. Um, Another 20 million was used to balance the fiscal year 23 budget and avoid cuts. So what that means is that at some point, when those ESSER dollars are not available, we will have to do some sort of action in order to balance the budget. Now, I don't, we won't have, other things have happened during the course of this time. It won't be $20 million, but it will be a significant number. Um, so as we start kind of planning the ESSER exit, um, again, we kind of go back to some of those same um, platforms and pillars that we talked about earlier. 
if as we look at initiatives it has to be aligned and it should be that was the goal up front but if for whatever reason something slipped through we're going to make sure that if it's going to continue it's aligned to the strategic plan that could involve some realignment if the strategic plan tweaks at all um, just to make sure that everything is in lockstep and we're that we're aligned at, with those dollars getting the goals and the outcomes that we that we want um, the initiative um, must align to an alternative funding source purpose rule set of rules if we are going to move it out of ESSER into another funding. So at risk is a good example. The, the budget amendment you approved earlier this evening gave us some capacity to move some ESSER initiatives into at risk, but it, they must be evidence-based strategies specifically listed on the at-risk list of evidence-based strategies that KSDE maintains. If it's not word for word listed, we can't pay for it out of at-risk funds. So that is something that we're looking at and determining what can move, what are those, again, looking at those top three priorities of mental health, behavior, um, academic supports, um, those type of things, what can move into at-risk specifically that's in the evidence-based practice continuum. Um, again, if we are going to continue initiative, we do want to be able to measure it so that we can report and dis make decisions as we go if it's doing what we want it to do. I think we have to acknowledge, though, that some good initiatives will have to probably end because there isn't enough capacity to cover all of the things we've been doing with ESSER plus all of the things we were doing before ESSER. I mean, that's just the hard facts of Again, we can do anything we want, we can't do everything we want. And these, this $270 million of historic investment, while fantastic for the three years, makes it difficult as we come out and all of those good things we've been accomplishing, how do we maximize the things that are working the best and peel off things that will hurt a bit, but not hurt as much. So that's kind of our challenge and our work for here for the next 18 months. Um, as we have, as we begin the end, here are the things we have done so far. First of all, we have announced that there are no new major ESSER initiatives that will happen. Um, that there, we, we, you will still see ESSER on um, board agendas because we will be finishing uh, initiatives, but you shouldn't see anything that strikes you as, huh, this looks new, and it's ESSER. Why? No, we shouldn't see anything more like that. There are no new positions that will be funded out of ESSER. If we need a position, it will go through the normal budgetary request process and it will be funded out of a different funding source if approved. Um, the principal school allocations are completed as of June 30th. We won't do that again primarily um, because we just don't have the, the bandwidth to manage 90 schools in that last year of ESSER to make sure all of those dollars get spent. I mean, it's, it was a lot to track the school-based spending. Um, we're going to focus on central district level initiatives in that last year and kind of how we're exiting those things. Um, we are moving the additional um, counselors and social workers um, into SPED and at-risk as we have um, funds available. Um, we are looking at at-risk and title funds for behavior positions. Again, it has to meet the definitions. It has to be, if it's title, it has to be at a title school. So there, those items are kind of in the works. Um, as far as some of those other positions, which I would, uh, I would guess that's what of greatest concern to the board, um, we anticipate a, an attrition model, probably an aggressive attrition model, but we don't anticipate any sort of major upheaval in any sort of reduction in force. We have a number of open positions. Um, we hope to transition people into open spots or we'll eliminate open spots and keep some of the ESSER positions. We'll do some of that work to, over the course of the next 18 to 24 months, if not a little longer than that. Um, and then there's obviously a number of kind of other activities that will be occurring related to ESSER all throughout the next 18 month period. Um, so before we stop for questions, just a quick summary of what we covered tonight. Um, the, the, all the federal packages, including the special ed components of direct COVID relief, total about $266 million for USD 259. Um, the goals of the strategic plan, as, as we displayed for you tonight, have definitely been supported through ESSER funds. Um, the first ESSER package was fully spent, has been fully spent for a while. The second ESSER package is 97% spent. The remaining 3% should be finished by June 30th. 
And the third ESSER package is 52.7% spent. Um, the remainder is planned and allocated out through September 30th of 24. And we did not anticipate any hardship in getting the funds spent by that date. Um, the criteria of that third ESSER package have been met. Um, and we did share, obviously, a, a, a significant chunk. About 15% of ESSER has been used for positions and budget balancing. And so we will have to take action over the next 18 to 24 months to get, take care of those things in some form or fashion. Um, but that work has begun, um, and we are focusing on attrition, alternative funding sources, and then where we have a contractual relationship, how we end those contracts. And so now we will stop and see if the board would have any questions. Well, as they're thinking about their questions, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just say this has been definitely uh, an interesting ride with these ESSER dollars. Uh, we've learned a lot, uh, and we've grown a lot as a system on how to really align our dollars to our strategic work and to expect outcomes from them. And so we've learned a lot. And so the system is better because of it, but it was a heavy, heavy lift. So I'm gonna thank the district leadership team from the academics to the operations side of the house for all of your work um, uh, through these dollars. And then I'm gonna also thank the district schools for their efforts in the buildings, all of our clerical support, and everyone that uh, all of our uh, nursing staff, as counselors and social workers, and everyone that had an impact or had an input and in implementing um, the work that was done through this ESSER uh, plan and the ESSER work that was done. So I just wanted to do that as the board is thinking of their questions. I wanted to acknowledge. Then I finally like to thank the Board of Education for your support because without your support, we would not be able to implement the things that uh, we brought forth. You, you embraced those things and supported us, so thank you for your work as well. Okay, I'll, I'll begin with the questions. The first one's an easy one. Um, you showed the slide on ACT, and I, something that I want to point out to our community that's watching us is that all of our kids take ACT. It's not a select group of students. We provide the ACT funding for every single one of our, they take it their junior year. Um, and all of our students, even the ones that aren't planning to go on to college, still take the ACT. So our scores, I'm really pleased with our scores. If we just handpicked the kids that were going to college, they'd look different. But I wanna know what all of our kids can do, and this shows us that. I also want to commend you on the work that you're doing to look at what we do in the future when this money goes away. Because 18 months is going to go by really fast. <laughs> and the fact that we're starting to look at positions, hold positions, uh, you know, when I saw the number of people, this is the first time I've actually seen the number of people that are involved in, in ESSER funding, and it was 700 and some, I've lost the slide. but. But, thank you. Um, it, 746 people. And that's 382 FTEs. That's more than some school districts have in their whole district. Correct. And so we, we have to do this work. It's critical and I'm very, very pleased that Dr. Thompson, her team, you all are, are looking very carefully at how do we not have to go into a major reduction of force because that hurts us all. So we really want to plan ahead and you're doing that. So I just wanted to put a kudo and thank you very much. Diane. Thank you for the presentation tonight. Um, my question's on slide six with the third grade reading proficiency. And I guess it's really not a question, but it's about the letters implementation and that the great impact that that's having and we're seeing real results from that. And so that's something I think that has been a great, great addition that we've been able to implement through the COVID process, but I think that was already starting before COVID. So um, so thank you for that initiative, Dr. Thompson. And and thank you for including that on your, on your slide, Susan, because that really does show um, things that are that are making a great and positive impact where they should be. 
And on slide number 27, beginning the ESSER exit, uh, one of the things that I just wanted to kind of point out is that we're, there was a school-based budget for ESSER, and now we're going to more of a central-based budget for this, this last year with ESSER money. Is that correct? That's right. Okay. <laughs> so just a slight change for some of the people um, within the district, but we're still still moving forward on the expenditures. Okay. So thank you. Very, very well thought out presentation and very concise for something that's so complicated and so, so big. So thank you very much. You guys did an excellent job. Ernestine. I have a question on, uh, I just didn't hear on slide 27. You said you're looking to at-risk and title funds for the behavior positions. Where would we get the at-risk and the title funds? Uh, at-risk is from the state, I presume. Well, thankfully this evening you all adopted a new budget that gave us some additional authority, um, a little over $8 million of additional at-risk funds that came to us this year because of the change in um, direct certifications for students that qualify for Medicaid. So we do have a little bit of wiggle room in the budget to start to shuffle some of these expenditures over to that existing budget. $8 million sounds like a lot of money. It disappears very quickly. Um, so at this time, we're really looking at those CST team members, so your counselors and social workers that we funded out of ESSER funds, and then we're kind of going to see what we have remaining um, once we get through the closure of this budget year where ESSER dollars are falling out to see what capacity there may be in um, at-risk funds with a combination of title to potentially pick up some of those larger behavior initiatives as well. Title funds are that is not special ed funds. That is related to at-risk students. Title I funds and at-risk funds are given to us the same way based on low-income students, yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Is that it? Uh, Kathy? Thank you. On slide seven, I think it is so encouraging to echo what these guys are saying, my, my colleagues over here, that the graduation rate this year is 80.4. I am so excited about that, that these structures that have been in place because of these funds that we didn't expect to get, and it really has begun to close the gap a little bit, um, I am concerned that um, there's gonna be a drop again because some of these structures might not be able to sustain themselves. So I'm hoping that through collaboration and dialogue with those that need to do that, we could perhaps combine some of these programs together so that we could keep these um, initiatives going for our students that might not be so fortunate to graduate like these guys are. This, this is so encouraging and so exciting for our, this has been an awesome evening for our district and our district needed this. We needed the pom-poms, we, we needed the cheerleading going on. And Okay, so this is something that we're looking forward to. We've got our eyes open, we know what we're dealing with and we just need to prioritize just to get our kids across that stage to get their diploma. And I am so excited to see the creativity that administration is gonna come up with to get this done. So thank you so much for, I didn't even need to take notes because you had it so, so easy to understand and you were very explicit in your explanation of everything. So thank you ladies very much. And, and I'm gonna piggy on, back on you just a little bit, Ms. Bond, because our kids, when they graduate, they leave with market value assets. They don't just get across the stage, they leave with something that will help them to be successful moving forward. And that's the beauty of it. We just didn't want our numbers to be up there, that's great, but what are they leaving with? And what can they take with them to, to uh, 
become productive citizens in our community. And if I could echo that, uh, you're absolutely right. And I think that our community is not seeing that. And that's why I wanted to publicly say what an awesome year this has been. And I look forward to the next several school years to see what else we can do with the market skills that they're gonna be having. I mean, this is just, I mean, we have two students in our district that are graduating Wichita State Tech and a high school at the same time. You know, they're having a hard time deciding which one do I go to. So, I mean, this is amazing. This is just great. And we have kids that are graduating and going to make more money than some of us make. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't even have a high school, they don't have a college degree, but they have market value assets that will get them where they wanna go. <laughs> I I think, oh, Ernestine, I'm sorry. Yes, I've got another question. Where are we going to, well, first of all, um, we once were at 72% of all the uh, costs for special ed that was funded by the state. It was up to 76%. This budget that passed a week ago Friday at about 10 o'clock at night, the special ed funding is going to be only 68.8% of what it costs us to educate special ed students. The governor asked for more, we've asked for more, a lot of people have said at least 90%. We not only didn't get an increase, we've got a, we got a drop. Where is the money going to come from where we are going to make up for that money that is going to be, I mean, we're not even at 76%. We're going to be down approximately 7%. Well, calling all SPED teachers who would like a position with Wichita Public Schools because we have various <laughs> vacancies, um, we'd love to stick you in. So uh, we do have a tremendous amount of budget savings in our special education fund because of just that the huge number of unfilled positions that we'd love to be able to fill and, and just aren't able to. And this is a challenge that we've had every single year for the seven years that I have been um, with the district that, uh, you know, this is, this is a, um, a challenge that we take on every year um, and, and are always able to, to fund our expenditures out of special education and we'll continue to do that in the next year, so. A lot of people and, and quite frankly, the legislature did fully fund regular education. What doesn't make sense to a lot of people is that some of that money has to be drained off to make up for where they didn't fund adequately the teaching for special ed. And so we've got fully funded for regular ed, but here comes this little sound of money drained off. And, and you know, we, we take our special education obligations extremely seriously. We, and we understand what, that there's, not only is there some federal regulation and guidance that we have to comply and state guidance that we have to comply, but it's the right thing to do. I mean, we need to serve students where they're at. Um, it, does that, unfortunately, sometimes cause maybe slightly larger class sizes on the regular ed side? That, that's what has to happen, right? That, that's the consequence of not fully funding special ed is that the general ed side, unfortunately, then has, has fewer resources to bring to bear. Right, so to fully fund education, they need to fund, fully fund regular ed, but also fully fund special ed. And we're not doing it this coming year. Well, and one of the problems is in Wichita, that's even magnified because we have so many special ed students, they, they move here because we give good services. And I do know of a family from Nebraska that was specifically moved to Wichita because of the excellent special ed program mm -hmm. here. Yeah. And, and smaller districts will have special ed, but not anywhere close to the numbers that we have. So that is a huge issue. Thank you for bringing it up. I thank you all for this report. It was excellent. You, you always do yeoman's work. This is even better. So thank you so very much. Thank you. Next item, Patrick. Next item, under miscellaneous, superintendent's report. OK, 
Okay, I guess I do have to give a report today, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> You're not done yet, girl. Okay. <laughs> so um, I, I would like to acknowledge that this is my last um, Board of Education meeting in this seat. Um, unless somebody tells me I have to come and sit in this seat or at the table, I will probably <laughs> sit up there with Terry or, or sit at home and watch you on TV. I don't know which <laughs> one it's going to be. But it is difficult to say farewell to a place that literally has been part of my entire life. Many of you know that um, my mother was a teacher in this school district, and, uh, and I've been um, walking the Wichita Public Schools pretty much all my life as a student, as a professional, as a, um, you know, all throughout my whole life. Um, it, it, this district has really impacted me as a human being. You know, as I stated, I was a student here. I was a, I think I even start, I started as a teacher, not a para. I volunteered in the summer with my mommy, but I was a, para, a teacher. Um, assistant principal, principal, I uh, worked in staff development, um, in the elementary office, and then in the seat here as superintendent. I've been impacted as a spouse. I've been impacted as a parent. So my whole entire life and being as a human being has been impacted by this district. I'm going to first off say thank you to the Board of Education for believing in me and elevating me to this awesome responsibility. I did not take it lightly. I tried to do the best that I could with my little bitty self to do all that I could to support students in this school district. Um, thank you to the leadership team. Thank you for being my second family. Um, Y'all loved me and beat me and did a whole bunch of things to me, and I love you for that. Thank you to the staff for saying yes to taking the opportunity to embrace the strategic plan and being part of the WPS family. I want to thank all of the staff for that. Um, I want to thank you to our parents in our school district. Um, for 31 years, you trusted me and others in this district to take on your greatest asset, which is your children. So thank you, families, for allowing us to serve your students and to serve you. And finally, I want to say um, thank you to our students. You know, I can't think of a more worthy profession or a mission um, than to strive each and every day to serve the students um, of this wonderful school district. Um, I want to really talk about the pride just a little bit, and some of, we had some of that tonight, but just talk about some of the cool things that have happened over the last seven years. We developed a culture-changing strategic plan, which we've not had in over 30 years, and we created one. My team knows what of a challenge that was. We didn't have a consultant. We didn't have anybody. We just had ourselves uh, trying to work together to build that strategic plan. Um, it brought focus to our community on the academic work and our workforce uh, work within our community. We survived COVID. Maybe we did. <laughs> we survived COVID. Um, and all of the operational challenges and, and things that happened during that time, but we did it. We did it, team, and we rocked it. So I'm, I'm grateful to, for you for all that. Our graduation rates continue to increase, not because of accident, but purposefully, intentionally, Mr. Alvarez, um, building infrastructure to support that work. Um, we know that safety continues to be a critical focus for us, but we did keep ourselves safe. Uh, during some really tough times when safety was of concern to most. We've uh, transformed our college and career readiness endeavors within our school district. Man, we have come a long way on that side from that strategic meetings when those families were like, it's not all about college, give us something else to work with. And so we began to build that work and thank you for that. And then it's punctuated at the end of this year by a ribbon cutting ceremony for our Future Ready Center for Advanced Manufacturing on May the 19th. So we even have a ribbon cutting coming up uh, for this Future Ready Center right next door to us. That place is amazing and it is going to prove that it is going to be impactful to this community and the workforce that we need. Um, I am also excited um, that we have a new superintendent, Mr. Kelly Bielafield. And I'm going to wish him well in everything that he does. And I'm going to do everything in my power to support him during his transition. Um, we have also extraordinary team leaders who are poised. Um, I don't know if you know this, but you have a dynamite executive team. They are the best in this country. I've worked with a lot of people in a lot of different places with the Council of Gracious Schools, Chiefs for Change, and nobody stands up to these folks, I'm telling you. So hold on to them tight and love them. Uh, and treat them with kindness because they are to be celebrated. And then as a parent, as you know, I still have a daughter that will graduate next year. I will still be on the sidelines, except for Kelly said I can't come in for 100 and 
80 days. But from the sidelines, I will be cheering on the Wichita Public Schools till the day I die because I am definitely WPS proud. And for those of you who are wondering what I will do next, the short answer is to rest. Uh, they must have heard me talk a lot. Everybody knows I like popcorn and hot tamales, and I mix them together, and that's how I eat my popcorn. And so that is exactly what's in this bag. So the whole district probably knows that that's my favorite thing to do. So I will just spend time eating popcorn and hot tamales and resting and catching up on Netflix shows that everybody talks about that I have no clue of what they're talking about because I don't ever have time to watch them. I'm going to be catching up on time to devote to my family. My parents are healthy, my family is healthy, and my daughter will be graduating soon, and I look forward to celebrating and spending time and being in their presence because I have been absent for quite a bit of time, but I'm gonna give them that time. And I have, um, uh, of course, everybody is asking, yes, I have had a number of offers to go back to work, and I'll consider what's next after I have the opportunity to rest and reflect, but believe me, it will not be full-time. It will be part-time or projects or board seats to sit on to serve in our community because, again, that's what I was born to do, and that is to serve, and I will continue to do that in some kind of form or fashion. Uh, Levanta already is out there. She's nodding because she's <laughs> they worry me to death about doing some things, and I'm going to do them as soon as I eat popcorn and hot tamales <laughs> as you that's it Bright Bridgerton and then there's a new one and I'm going once I catch up then I'll call you Levanta <laughs> yeah I love this community and I love this school district everybody knows that and I love my family um, which is all of you and I can't wait to celebrate uh, as you guys continue to do great things for kids because I already know you're poised and you're ready for, to take it to greater heights right so I love you all, and I thank you for everything, and I'm out. <laughs> I hate to tell you this, Dr. Thompson, you're not out yet. <laughs> Okay, I, I forgot. I'm out on July 4th. 4th. <laughs> Until then, all of you on the ground. We got graduations. I should oh. speak to that. Uh, I'm telling, saying goodbye, but I'm going to talk about graduations. So we've started some graduations this week. Um, some of our sensory graduations, I've been participating in those. Those have been great. Um, and then we are moving into next week where we'll start a full comprehensive groups of, 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 of graduations. Our feet will hurt. Uh, make sure you schedule your manicure, your pedicures anyway, afterwards. And stay, you can get one too. Um, and so make sure you'll be ready for those graduations. Wear comfy shoes. Don't try to wear your cute shoes, Miss Bond. You got to wear some comfy shoes to stand for long periods of time. So we'll be able to finish out our graduations. There's some fifth grade graduations coming up and some all kinds of activities coming up. We got our uh, grad, um, our our um, botanica for our longevity and retirement that I don't have, um, it's on, the, well, yeah. And then we will have our employees, thank you for all of our employees uh, for their service at the year end event at the Cedric County Zoo. So we have so many more things to do and I have so much more work to do uh, until July 4th. And we will see you all at all of those activities um, to celebrate the end of the year and to culminate all of our kids, 2000 and something of them, whatever Amanda said, walking across that stage. And that's why we do what we do. And we'll be excited to receive those students. So uh, I now I end my report. Thank you <laughs> for the, let me do the addition. Okay, um, next item. Next item, Board of Education report and requests. Kathy? Oh. It's been a busy month. It's been a very busy month. Um, I typed it out. Okay, I attended the Stealth Night at Exploration Place. A phenomenal evening. Those, those people did a wonderful job putting that together. I attended the JROTC National Award wearing two hats, that of the Board of Education and my DAR. I attended the Super Super Sack at the Wind Surge Stadium that these students were talking about. Very impressed, very impressed with the things that they that they offered um, and the ideas. I really hope that this board can implement some of their ideas because it not only shows that we listened, but it shows that you know we need to. They know what's going on in the schools. We're not in that building every day. Um, I attended Wilbur um, Tim Elson's for Excellence at the zoo, and it was just really an exciting 
thing to see him. And, and uh, just a little side note, um, I saw a lady there that used to work with my father, and it was actually Tim's aunt. Oh. So that was just really kind of a neat, it's a small world, and the older we get, the smaller it gets. I attended the Cloud Elementary for reading, which was very impressive to see all of those books that are given out to our students. Um, I, I, I sub in Derby, and I've been subbing very frequently lately. And every chance those kids get to read, they want to read. They'd prefer to read than go on their Chrome, their Chromebook. So I was happy to see that. Um, I was able to attend Mitch Lynn's um, outgoing principal at his retirement party. So that was exciting. I got to see other teachers from Allison and then from where he used to teach. Um, I attended the Luncheon of Assistance League of Wichita for the awards for our students. I volunteered with Pando at Wilbur for the you Are Re for you Reality. That was exciting to see. Um, I did it at North High also the month prior. These kids have no idea how much clothes cost. I mean, Wilbur, they're like, what? That's that much? Yes, that. I mean, you can cut that on your budget. No, no, man, I need clothes. Well, then you need to cut food. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. Um, I want to give a shout out to Terry Moses. I sit on the uh, crisis uh, team um, as part of this, and I'm, I, she is doing a phenomenal job with the safety of our buildings for our students, our staff, and our teachers. I want to just go ahead and give a little bit of an update of what um, we talked about. Um, school safety experts say there is no single answer to prevent school violence. School leaders should draw on layers of precautions, emphasizing human factors like staff training and supportive student relationships. And that's one of the things we heard also at Super Super SAC was building relationships with those students. That shows that, that a, a grown up, an adult, really cares about the person that they are, not just because they're a student in our school. In, in 2022, there was 460 updated cameras installed. 143 cameras were added, five video doorbells were installed, and 71 additional card readers. I'm very impressed with that. Thank you so much for, uh, because that was a big concern of mine last year that I went, went to you with, and I just said, you know, after that Vivaldi, is it Vivaldi? No, that's a, a composer is Vivaldi. Yeah. Uvaldi, okay, I'm sorry. Um, th th really just, you know, I really, I'm a, not, I'm proactive, not reactive. I really want to make sure things are in place where we've done everything that we can. The monitoring of online activity is going well. Safety service monitors, um, alerts received from software filters designed to recognize keywords, and they're on top of that. Um, there are specific trainings coming up in July and August affording our educators training in youth mental health and first aid. Safe schools training and for substitute teachers there will be training and I do believe that their ID cards, and correct me if I'm wrong, are going to be able to go ahead and get into the building and lock the doors. As a substitute teacher I'm very grateful for that. I don't have one in the district that I serve as a substitute so I think that that's a good idea. I attended um, the Fight Fentanyl Awareness Festival with uh, USD 259 students who created a movie out of the Teen View magazine that they've created that you might see around some of our schools. I attended the Pando Star Awards and I watched the movie with the students as we just said. Um, I was also a guest speaker at an event speaking about the promise of some exciting things that are happening in our district. Kelly Bielefeld has now um, called me the, um, the district's cheerleader, believe it or not. <laughs> so um, I am, I'm so excited about this. Um, I do have some new business. Um, although we're at the end of the school year, I'm already thinking about the upcoming school year. In order to bring more order in the classrooms and to decrease distractions, I wonder if this board could begin to dialogue about banning cell phones from the classroom with strict consequences if a student brings a phone into the classroom. Northwest High School has done this the entire year. Eric Holdeman at Northwest has had much success prohibiting phones in the classroom. Phones are allowed during passing periods and at lunchtime, just not in the classroom. I would even go as far as to ask if we could create a policy to reflect this. The caveat is that this would be a district-wide, district-wide, um, and the consequences would need to be consistent with all schools. Um, they must be enforced consistently throughout the district. The elimination of phones in the classrooms will eliminate distractions, allowing the teacher to teach and the students to learn, and it will decrease violence and put the focus on education and not socialization, socializing. 
Um, I, I wondered, you know, I don't know the process of new business. It's not something that I feel like we need to discuss this evening, but it is something that I would like to discuss perhaps at the next board meeting and putting it on the agenda. Um, yes? Yeah, go ahead. If that is a board request, just write it up on your um, sheet, yeah, it, and that's, that's it's all just you need. I don't know if this is a request or it's oh, a new okay. business okay. because it's something that yep. I would like to begin to talk about before the school year even uh, approaches us in August. Okay, I think it is a request, so if you could just okay. put it on the request form. Well, all that talk, and I could have just written that's it down. Okay, oh, well. <laughs> okay. Um, Dr. Thompson, I would like to say something to you. You are many things that people have said about you all evening tonight, but there's only one word I can think of. Beloved, you are a beloved person amongst the community and the district. I wish you well. I'm grateful that I had the time that I had with you, although it was a rough start, but we ironed it out, and I'm grateful for your grace. That is one thing that you and I discussed, and we have grace and forgiveness, and I'm so grateful for that. You're a great teacher, a mentor, and a wonderful leader for this, so I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, Kathy. Julie? Um, this, uh, I think th w what we've experienced tonight, other than the fact that it's Dr. Thompson's last night, well, that, that part was not good. But all of the, <laughs> but all of the, all of the scholarships and um, seeing our kids and the awards of our schools, that this piece that we're experiencing tonight and then graduations is the absolute best part of being a board member. <laughs> and um, we, um, though these things that we've experienced tonight and the graduation ceremonies that we get to, par to be a part of just absolutely make us WPS proud. Um, I've been a part of this school district for a long time too, just like Dr. Thompson and Cheryl Logan, and I love this district, and I am so proud of it, and I'm so excited for the graduation ceremonies coming up, and it was it's so great that our kids have received so many scholarship dollars and have their assets when they graduate, and um, I echo also that, um, I've loved working with you, Dr. Thompson, and I'm sorry to see you go, but I am uh, thankful for the service that you've had in this district, so. Diane? Well, Julie, I'm gonna say some of the things that you were at with, with us as well, on just different activities that we do each month. And so uh, I also attended the GRTC National Awards Ceremony, where more than 200 awards were presented, and there was also a change of command for the district core staff, and those students serve the JRTC students um, at a district level across all the different schools and the leadership programs in the middle schools. I also attended Super Super SAC, uh, where we broke up the students into smaller groups to discuss different topics as they presented to us tonight. And so I sat on, on one of those groups to just hear their thoughts and process on different things. Um, I also attended the Reading Opens the World Family Literacy and Book Fair at Cloud Elementary, and Julie was there as well. And we also heard a roundtable discussion that included parents, educators, and administrators to talk about their collaborative effort to spread the joy of reading and how to empower parents with tips and tools to support their students and their education. And so it was a very heartfelt moment when you listened to one mom that talked about uh, the excitement that her little son was showing in reading and how he wanted to go to the library more often and that was influencing his younger siblings as well. Um, I was greatly honored to attend the Wichita Business Business Journal's 40 Under 40 to celebrate our clerk of the board, Patrick Green. Yes. And so I... <laughs> it was a great honor to be um, part mm -hmm. of his recognition um, in a citywide recognition for just the great work that Patrick does and the exceptional service that he does to the Wichita Public School and to, to us as board members. So Patrick, 
a deep gratitude. Thank you for all the work that you do for us and, and you make, make our lives a little easier with our organization. So thank you very much. Um, I also uh, visited with Heights High School and one of the things that Heights High School is really working on, their, their coaches and their sports are really aligning the why of why academics is so important to sports. And they're showing them what recruiters want to see in the academics. They're showing um, how the students can get scholarships if they want to be a Division I player, if they just want to go to Butler Community College to play sports, or if they just want to get any type of certificate or uh, scholarship for playing sports. The, the coaches are really setting the students down and saying, you need to raise your GPA and you can get this much more for scholarships. They're really giving them the reason why and what the recruiters are looking at uh, to help those students um, really excel in their academic performance. I visited with Adams Elementary, uh, Northeast Magnet High School, and then have uh, we've started the retirement ceremonies for Dr. Thompson just this, this afternoon. And so, Dr. Thompson, it's been an honor to serve with you. It's been a pleasure to get to know you professionally and personally. And um, thank you for all the initiatives that you have done. Uh, this evening, uh, it was referred to that all the great work that you have done will last on for many years to come. And I would just like to echo that sentiment and, and just have a heartfelt... <coughs> deep gratitude for everything that you've done in the district and your service and commitment. So thank you very much. Thank you. Ernestine? Oh, sorry. No, we, Stay we, we can work our way back. Yeah, well, that's, well, that's what we were doing. <laughs> See, sometimes it keeps you awake when I call on you out of turn. <laughs> well, one of the coolest things that I've been a part of is in, in recent weeks was when one of the teachers in this district went to Mr. Alvarez and said, I've got an idea for a grant that would help kids to love reading, not just do it. And by golly, this grant from the American Federation of Teachers was funded. And that came to some schools here in this district. And the AFT national president, this is a teacher's organization nationally, Randy Weingarten came to Wichita to be able to be at that to see the results of that wonderful grant and give away thousands of books. And um, I'm going to put a picture online of uh, Gil Alvarez and a whole lot of <laughs> high district personnel, including me, of course. <laughs> standing, standing there handing out these free books to these kids, and the kids are saying, can I have another one? Can I have another one? And they're gathering. They had books that were in Spanish as well as in English. This was uh, the schools involved were Pleasant Valley and Cloud and what? Ortiz. 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 And that was such a cool thing. The title of it was called um, Reading Opens the World. And that was a wonderful experience to just watch those kids. It was interesting because the AFT president nationally did some reading for the kids. And I don't think I'll get to put this picture on, online because I don't have the kids' parents' permission to put the, but to have the kids just with their mouths open as they're just listening to these stories. It was just a wonderful experience. Um, I have also attended the Assistance League Scholarship Thing. What a kick that was. Mm -hmm. And I, they put each of the school board members at different tables, so we got to be with different kids around the room. And that was so what. And this young man that was at my table was one of the ones tonight that was up here, and he kind of winked at me and we shook hands. <laughs> we kind of shook hands like, yeah, we know one another over here. But it's so wonderful to see these kids uh, in that circumstance and, and so many of them have, have come from situations where this was not, where going to college or even going to WSU Tech was not really in a possibility. So that was kind of cool. I want to share with you that some recent national tests and national stats have come out. Less than 50% of all adults in the United States 
can say who, what the three branches, equal branches of our federal government are. That's the adults. But I'll tell you something else that was on the news this week. Only 22% of our eighth graders could be eighth grade proficient in US history. What is worse, only 13% of eighth graders were proficient, just proficient, in understanding civics. Way back when I first started on this board, I started to talk about we needed to have more civics in our schools, all the way from K through 12. And we got COVID in there, and that sort of wiped out any kind of, we were just barely holding on for a while. But I really, and by the way, I have already spoken to Mr. Bielefield about this. <laughs> but it really, we have got to take serious. The whole purpose of tax money supporting public education is so that we will have an educated electorate. And to have less than 50% of the adults. The other thing I want to point out is we are so excited, and I am thrilled that we have moved from 70%, less than 70% graduation, to 80% graduation. But think about this. That still leaves 20% who drop out before they hit the senior year. In our system, as we have it, government is taught in the senior year. That means 20% of our students never learn government. Now that doesn't account for how come that more than 50% of our adults can't even say the legislative, judicial, and executive branches of the federal government. You notice I didn't ask you guys to name them, raise your hands. <laughs> that, <laughs> you think it'd be 99% stands it. Okay, okay. But anyway, I, I just really, and I'm, I'm not putting this down as one of my little paper things, because I want to just give Mr. Bielefield a chance to get his feet on the ground. But I want to ask the rest of my colleagues here to, for us to begin to think of a way that we can put civics in even, where, where's Rod? Rob? We could make computer games. <laughs> with civics, for gosh sakes, <laughs> and kids could learn it that way. Um, one of the ideas that I've had the approval from the principal at um, Gordon Parks is having some kids create videos that teach. You know, remember the old, I'm just a bill, I'm only a bill on Capitol Hill? <laughs> Why can't our kids create some of those videos and then we could show them not only on our websites, but we could, we could put them out in public. Well, that's the end of my, I'll get off my soapbox <laughs> now about that, but I just, we've got to begin to have civics. And I am thrilled that we've got our CTE, but we now need to say every person, no matter what their job is, a citizen or has an impact in this country, so we need to hit that part. And I just thank you, Dr. Thompson, because you heard me a long time ago, and you you and I agreed that it, through the COVID, we needed to drop that issue and drop that hot potato there. But I thank you for your leadership and your, just the conscience that you've been for all of us. I've been connected with this Wichita School Board probably longer than any of you because I began teaching here in the 70s. And I have never, in the teaching that I'd done before that, I've never had a superintendent as qualified as you, as qualified, it, all of them have got some qualities. They, all of them have like ability to t make plans, ability to do that. But you seem to hit them all. You hit the community part, you hit the great ideas part, you hit the details to make sure that they're carried through. You hit, you hit the part about picking tremendous leaders to be under you. Almost nobody I know can do all of that. You're just magic. You're going to probably disappear shortly after this, and we'll find out that she was, she was magic, and she went poof and disappeared. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Stan. Um, I would just like to thank the teachers out there, and especially since this is Teacher Appreciation Week, 
Uh, I know that they are performing small and large miracles every single day in our classroom. Also want to say congratulations to our seniors. Um, and I'm glad uh, Ms. Bond brought up the graduation rate tonight. Uh, that is one issue that I want to keep stressing. Um, and I think if one thing we are forgetting every once in a while is uh, the behavior issue is going to be needed to be talked about in a broader concept of what it also will mean to our graduation rates. So I just want to congratulate our seniors as you enter your last uh, couple weeks of, of school. And then also, I also want to say thank you to Dr. Thompson, but I also want to say thank you to her family as well. Uh, all of us um, make sacrifices to do this, uh, as our teachers do, as our parents do, as our students do, uh, but we don't do it alone. And so I've had the great privilege of meeting Dr. Thompson's family, and they're great people, and I'm sure they're happy to have you back. I just want to touch on three things that I, I learned from Dr. Thompson in this short period of time. Um, uh, it's been a long time. <laughs> Five years has been a long time. So. It, it feels very short. I, working with Dr. Thompson, it, 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 feel, it has gone by very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, at one of our very first meetings after COVID had broke, she said something to the effect like, uh, Let's, we need to use grace and patience. And I was sitting right over there, and I thought, you know, that's kind of the kindergarten teacher <laughs> approach to this. I think we're going to need a little more substance on this COVID thing. But, you know, I have kept going back to grace and patience, not only on the school board, but in my private life and with my family, with my friends. It was the greatest lesson I have ever learned from you, Dr. Thompson. And I hear your voice every single time I get in a tough situation. And I, <laughs> and I, and I, I will always remember your grace and patience. And it just also shows you how far ahead of us you were at that time. Because while I was sitting over there saying, what's that got to do with what we got to face with COVID? <laughs> It turned out that it was everything to do with it. And the second thing was how to stay focused. I've never, I've been involved with many organizations uh, in my adult life. Um, I have been through a lot of strategic plans in various organizations. I have never been in an organization or a private business that really stayed focused on once they made a commitment to a plan. And you were our leader on that and you made it easy, and I think that's another thing I'm gonna keep taking away from you, is when the storms come, and I think Kelly, this, this will be great advice for Kelly, when the storms come, it, the key is to keep your Dr. Thompson focus, and so that's what I hope to do, continue to. And the, and the last one is, um, <laughs> when you visit a, a school, when you visit a school with Dr. Thompson <laughs> and you see the little girls look at Dr. Thompson and they see their potential, that, that has been the greatest. Uh, highlight of my career so far. And I apologize for crying. <laughs> but I, maybe it's because I was a father, uh, father of three girls, but I think we sometimes forget how important diversity is. And when people see somebody that looks like them, it can mean the world. And so I will never forget those looks. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, so emotional. Thank you, Cheryl. You never apologize for that. <laughs> that that is that is so true. My goodness. Wow. How do I top all of this, folks? I, <laughs> I've been at many of the events that they've all talked about, so I'm not going to go through them again. I, I think there is a couple of things, though, that I want to highlight, and that is I had the pleasure of being at our Acacia accreditation meeting. It was a full day, and the team 
presented at that meeting, and they, the team was there to kind of give us suggestions and help on what we continue to do to get, get better. And, and they did that. They were a great team. But I walked away thinking, oh my gosh, this district is so moving in the right direction. And I think the chart that we saw in the, the budget hearing piece shows that. We're making percentages of growth every year with our kids. And whether that's graduation rate, whether that's third grade reading scores, any of our formative assessments, we're moving in the right direction. And I give you and your team a <laughs> lot of praise for that. Because that didn't happen by accident, folks. And, and we've got to keep moving because we're doing the right thing for kids. And as I think about going into the graduation season, and I am the, going to be the proud grandmother of three seniors who graduate this year, and, and I'll get to be on the stage with two of them, and I'll probably cry. My, my, one of my grandsons told me very clearly, Grandma, you may not hug me on stage. <laughs> so I won't. <laughs> but I'll hug him at home because... <laughs> And, uh, you know, our kids are proud of themselves. I I'm seeing that personally with, with my grandchildren. They know that this is the first step of a lot of other big steps that they're going to take in their lives. And I give so much praise to this district to bringing these kids along and getting them to graduate. Um, you know, our teachers, Teacher Appreciation Week is never m enough, but thank you teachers. We could not do it without you. We could not do it without you. You're great people, and you serve our students extremely well. Um, Dr. Thompson, I, I have said this before. I'm old, and actually, I started <laughs> teaching in the Wichita District in 1969. <laughs> That's when I was doing it. Was, it was that, oh, yeah. <laughs> Dr. Thompson, you could have said a lot of things other than that. <laughs> you weren't whispering. The car crowd heard you. She said, that's when I was born. <laughs> um, you know, I started with Al Moores and have been through and with a lot of superintendents since then, some who stayed a long time, some who stayed a very, very short time. Your time wasn't anywhere close to long enough. You are by far the best superintendent I've ever worked with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when, when we gave you your challenge when you were hired in, we said, change community relations, that's happened in spades. She is known everywhere. Um, we said, develop a strategic plan that we can use that will guide us. If you walk out to our school service center now and talk to a plumber, they can tell you what they're doing that applies to the strategic plan to help kids in schools. I bet you couldn't do that in 99% of the districts across the country. Everybody knows our goals and they know how they fit into our goals. And that was not an accident. That was lots of hard work done by you, done by your team, done by building principals, done by teachers, done by custodians, done by paras. Everybody has a buy-in into that strategic plan and they know that it's the driver of our district. And that's what, you, if you go out and you say, dream, believe, and achieve. Everybody knows it, everybody knows it. I bet you all know it, don't you? <laughs> and, and, you know, yes, this is not your last day, but it's your last board meeting. And I just, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for everything that you've given and how much stronger this district is now yes. than it was when you came here. And I don't know how thank you isn't enough, but it's all we can say right now and we appreciate you greatly, and we will miss you greatly. 
You have the right to respond if you want to. <laughs> 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 then you would cry. <laughs> okay, next item. Next item, new business. Since we had Kathy do hers on a request, I don't see any other new business. Next item. Next item, executive session. Diane. I move the board recess into executive session to discuss pending negotiations between the Board of Education and the United Teachers of Wichita pursuant to the employer-employee negotiations exception under the Kansas Open Meetings Act. And the meeting will resume in this room at approximately 9.15. Second. Okay, the motion was made by Diane to go to executive session and seconded by Stan. Please cast your votes. We are adjourned to executive session. Motion passed 6-0. I am going to call the board back into session from our executive session. Uh, Diane? I move that the board recess into an executive session to discuss pending negotiations between the Board of Education and the United Teachers of Wichita pursuant to the employer-employee negotiations exception under the Kansas Open Meetings Act and the open meeting will be extended and resume in this room at 9.45. I second was moved by Diane, or motion was made by Diane and seconded by Kathy. Please cast your vote. Oops, sorry. Motion passes 4-0. We are in executive session. the meeting back to order we ha are coming back from executive session Diane I move that the board recess into executive session to discuss with the board's legal counsel a matter which the board is a party pursuant to the exception for the matters which would be deemed privilege in the attorney client relationship under the Kansas Open Meetings Act and the open meeting will resume in this room at 10:05 I second. Okay, the motion was made by, Di by Diane to move to executive session, seconded by Kathy. Hit the button. I did. No, no. Everybody's voted. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> motion passes 4 0. We are in executive session. <laughs> I call the meeting back to order from executive session. Do I hear a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. It was moved by Diane and seconded by Kathy that we adjourn the meeting. All those in favor, favor raise your hand. Motion passes 4-0. Thank you. We will see you at our next board meeting. <laughs>